congratulations on this project. It is quite the interesting watch. It it caught me off guard. Uh, usually when okay. I, I think of coming of age movies, I think uh, younger kids. This is more for more of an adult. Uh, why did you decide to tell the story? Uh, well, um, the reason I decided to tell the story, I had met my writing partner, Meryl Branch McTiernan at a production company, um, about seven years ago. And I was just in a place in my career. I've been working as a producer for 10 years, directing sometimes when I was also producing, but I was really ready to kind of go all in on something and put my heart and soul into it and, and direct it. And she told me this idea she had for a script about an ex-boyfriend inspired by an ex-boyfriend who really did this in college. He had an affair with his girlfriend's mother and the girlfriend didn't know. And she wanted to write a script like that and it reminded her of The Graduate. And we both agreed that Mrs. Robinson was like the most captivating character to us in that movie. <laughs> and so that's kind of how it started. Um, you know, it, it was a long process, a long development process. Um, we wrote the script together and workshopped like the crap out of it for like five years, um, which was really, uh, wonderful, lots of arguments, lots of characters we killed off, you know, we really, really put a lot into the script. But um, I think I came to learn on like a deeper level why I want to tell the story. What what I brought to the story is I feel like Nancy, the main character, is like really going through like a reckoning in her life where like her old life is really not serving her anymore. And it's it's kind of falling apart, but she's holding on to it. And she needs to really let it go. And, and, and in this case, set it on fire. <laughs> it may not be the most uh, healthy way to, to start over, but it's kind of the way she has to do it um, in the script. So I think, you know, I've been in those moments in my life where it feels like the whole world's ending, but it's actually just like the new you is, is coming out and starting over. Um, so I think that's kind of the deeper connection that I had to the script. Because, you know, I mean, I haven't gone through menopause yet. It's funny when we started writing the script it seemed so far away it's not so far away now <laughs> but um uh and then also Meryl and I you know we we have you know we've dated a lot of dubious men the name of our production company is X Files Productions like EX uh mm -hmm. which was a joke that we used at Sundance when we were pitching we like made that up as our production company to put on parties to get invited and now it actually is our production company but also you know we pulled from our own kind of dubious relationship choices to like tap into how Nancy's feeling, to tap into who Alex is, and, um, you know, make all those characters real and those relationships real and feel grounded. Definitely. And uh, I think one of the, the charming factors of this, and I think what really caught me was the fact that this kind of gives permission for you to start over. Like, it, it tells you it's okay to, to you know, go through mistakes, to, through, to have turbulation in your, in your life, and yet, you know, continue on. Uh, why was this message important for you guys? You know, I think, I think women get told a lot of crap um, through media, through the things we've grown up with that aren't serving us anymore. You know, I think um, uh, it's getting better, but there's still like a lot of sludge in there. You know, I was a teenager in the nineties when you were expected to look like a Victoria's Secret supermodel. Um, you know, like that, I don't think is true anymore, but I still carry that, those thoughts with me and have to like, think about them and manage them. Um, so I think, I think, you know, all the characters have an arc or like are human, like no one's really a villain. I mean, Morty is kind of the most villainous, but he's kind of fun. Like he's a fun asshole. <laughs> and, um, even, even Morty thinks he's, tr he's trying to help, you know, I mean, in his own yeah. way, but, um, I think it was really like women it's okay to make mistakes like this that like passion can be dangerous um and um mess up your world in a lot of ways but it also can electrify you and that there's something really valuable in that um and i'm so happy that you got that message that like it's going to be okay which i think really is like the story of it for everyone and then especially for women in aging that like it's going to be okay like you can continue to grow and be different and not hold on to the past mm -hmm. Definitely. And you have a a very complicated family, to say the least. I, I don't want to give too much away. Um, why have such a fam family dynamic? Because it's not something you typically see in movies. You know, it's funny. I feel like my a lot of it's inspired by my family dynamic. Um, 
and I, I think Meryl too, but like my mom is very much inspired by Nancy. Uh, my dad is in, has some Morty characteristics, not as uh, intense, but uh, some of the one-liners from Morty are actually from my father. <laughs> so I guess that's <laughs> the, the kind of family I know <laughs> um, is a very complicated family. <laughs> Uh, from this family dynamic, uh, is there a character you, I guess, identify with the most? Um, you know, I really have like, I guess Nancy, because she's the main character and, you know, I put so much into Nancy and, um, but I guess I just kind of love all of them in different ways. And it's like little pieces of myself. There's not one person that I would say is like kind of my avatar. Um, though it is funny. I did get teased, like. I did kind of the typical director thing. I mean, Dina Meyer is gorgeous. So I'm not not saying that I look like her per se, but like, you know, we have curly hair. We kind of have like a similar look. So I feel like I did that director thing where like you like cast someone who sort of looks like you, but we really don't have, Nancy and I don't have that much in common. You know, I don't have kids yet. And um, yeah, so I guess it's just different shades of different people um, in the characters. Uh, you know, indie films in general have, you know, trouble getting produced. Uh, what were some of the obstacles that you guys went through to get this story told? Uh, a lot. Um, I mean, we worked on the script for a long time to really make sure it was good. And um, it started to place in competitions. It was a quarter finalist in the um, Academy's Nickel screenplay competition, the fellowship they do every year. It was a quarter finalist twice. So it was like in the top 5% of like 15,000 scripts, which we thought was very good for like a sex comedy. <laughs> um, so uh, that gave us uh, confidence and um, we went pitching it around. We went to Sundance a couple of years and like crashed parties and pitched it to people. And um, while we did get some interest, it's really challenging, especially like I'm a first time director. I've directed a lot of shorts. Uh, I have a lot of industry experience, but I don't have a short that played at Sundance that won that is in the same tone as the film. So it's really hard to get people to like, want to give you money um, and especially for women like that's been proven that that's kind of the big um, challenge now for women is like they're in school 50 percent you know more than 50 percent of film schools are women now the shorts are doing really well but the really big hurdle is women being able to actually make a feature because you have so you have to make that leap like at some point you have to just somehow make that leap so uh, we actually fundraised ourselves um, which was a interesting process I was able to through just some kind of uh, unconventional means, get some seed money, um, nothing illegal or anything, but just, uh, uh, you know, some, some maybe some loans I shouldn't have taken out at my grad school. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I was able to get some loan money to just start the seed process. And, um, and then we learned about crowd equity financing and it had, um, that was just kind of a newer way of doing um, crowd, uh, crowd fine, like, it's not like Kickstarter. It's like where people invest in um, the company. You have a company on the SEC and then there's different like facilitators of that online. So we had a friend who was in this directing collective with me who did it and they raised like $130,000, which is, you know, a lot more than Kickstarter can raise usually, usually for someone it's like a 20 grand uh, thing. So inspired by their success, we did it ourselves. And, um, and then through that experience of the crowd equity campaign, we also got an angel investor interested in the project. So it took about a year, but it actually was like, shockingly easy to do once we took that leap. Um, and it was crazy because we had so many people tell us no for so long. And then suddenly, like the momentum of the momentum we created became its own kind of animal. It was really a really inspiring kind of amazing process that I, and that kind of carried us into production as well. Like we were able to get Dina Meyer in the lead role and that was amazing. And uh, like the house that we got um, is a like 1920s Craftsman in Glendale. It's on the historical register. I papered different neighborhoods that kind of looked like Pasadena in California. I live on the east side. And Pasadena is really expensive to shoot in. So I kind of just like honed in on these certain neighborhoods, made a flyer, put it in mailboxes of houses that we wanted. We wanted a craftsman with a pool, a guest house is like very specific. And we found this wonderful couple that was selling their home and wanted to memorialize their home on film and gave it to us for like a total deal. Uh, and it's a total character in the movie too, which was kind of amazing. So it was like kind of this amazing journey of like kind of taking that first really scary leap 
a betting on yourself and then just like watching or feeling it snowball in a way that was like amazing and very empowering. With this journey, how do you feel about it, you know, coming to uh, Dances with Films, which is in the Chinese theater? I'm so excited. Like, uh, <laughs> it's like, it feels like, uh, like a very big personal milestone, like putting on a wedding or something. Like I have a friend from high school who I haven't seen in 15 years who was like flying out to LA to come to see the movie premiere and is like leaving that day, which is really sweet. Um, and we're gonna have the cast and crew there. Uh, for most people, it'll be the first time seeing the film. It's a 450 person theater. Um, the film is very, uh, there's a lot of hopefully laughter and gasping, you know, so I think it's gonna be a really fun environment. Um, so I'm really excited and, and Dances with Films is such a like highly regarded festival. Um, it's really nice to do it in Los Angeles. Um, and um, yeah, I'm I'm very excited. I think it's going to be a really special night. Definitely. I think Dances with Films is such a diverse film festival. It has such high quality films. A lot of films that you probably wouldn't see in Hollywood because they're very unique. Um, how do you feel being, a, you know, selected by them? Oh, I think it's great. And I'm, you know, I'm really looking forward to the festival starts tomorrow. Yeah, I'm just really looking forward to like the whole adventure of it. And, you know, I've been to a lot of festivals before and uh, with the project Meryl and I have. And so for, and we love going to festivals and schmoozing and meeting other filmmakers and seeing their films. And so it's just going to be really, uh, it's going to be like a nice kind of full circle moment for for us from those, you know, going to those festivals and pitching the project now being at Dances with Films with our own project. I think it's going to feel really nice and what do you hope uh people get from the film when they watch it i mean exactly what you said you know that like people make mistakes like for forgiveness is a great human quality that we have um and to like take risks too you know that like like change change comes at a price but it's like worth it um and i hope that yeah, I think it, I hope it just makes people feel emotional at the end that they like care about these characters and like um, are moved by it too at the end. That would be great. Awesome. Uh, congratulations on this. Uh, would you like to plug uh, when the screening is at Fancy with Films? Yeah, that'd be great. So it's uh, July 2nd at 2.45 p.m. at the Chinese Theater. And um, we'll be there. Dina Meyer, Aaron Dominguez, and Julia Tolchin will also be a part of the Q&A as well as my writing partner, Meryl. Um, yeah, it should be a good time. Awesome. Once again, congratulations. This is a fantastic film. Thanks. And, you know, thank you. Best of luck to you guys for th during the festival. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Jesus. I really appreciate it.